Welcome to Geography 485-585L, Internet Mapping, Module 4.2, Interoperability Standards, Web Feature Services, and Web Coverage Services. Today we will be looking at the capabilities and purpose, over, providing an overview of the various commands, and providing sample requests for both the Open Geospatial Consortium Web Feature Services and Web Covered Services. Starting with the Web Feature Services, we can introduce the topic with a little bit of background and a link to the um, standards upon which this presentation is based as we are working here from the version 2.0 Web Feature Services or WFS uh, specification where in that uh, specification it defines some background concepts related to Web Feature Services. Uh, first, um, that Web Feature Services are basically services that allow for discoveries of query operations against and potentially updates or modifications to um, data sets that are stored in remote servers where those data are primarily focused on features and their associated attributes. The types of requests that could be submitted to those remote servers include requests to determine the capabilities of those servers and information about the services that are provided support for query operations that allow for the retrieval of subsets of features based on values associated with those features, optional locking operations that support the modification or deletion of specific features, the definition of transactions, also an optional feature that supports the creation, modification, or replacement of data in the remote server um, in, a, in a manner that supports uh, being able to roll back or uh, cancel a change if all of the updates cannot be successfully completed. And finally, the storage of um, query operations or predefined queries on the server that allow a uh, essentially a shortcut or short reference to uh, queries and operations that are defined on the server that um, can be repeatedly called by client applications or client users that are interacting with those servers. In our discussion today, we are going to be uh, working particularly with um, a set, a subset of the requests that may be submitted to a web feature service, um, specifically the get capabilities, describe feature type, and get feature requests. But we will start with a broader discussion of the um, the full list of requests that could be submitted to a web feature service. Here focusing on those that can be submitted as key value pairs or KVPs associated with an HTTP GET method of interacting with a web feature service. As we've seen with previous OGC services, the GET capabilities request is the key request that you can submit to a service to retrieve service metadata for that particular service. This is the core information that is required to then be able to effectively formulate requests to that remote service for data or additional information. A second request is the describe feature type request that provides more detailed information about a specific feature type particularly um, in the form of information about the attributes associated with a given feature type. Get property value is an optional request for the values for a given property for a specific feature type. So this is a way to retrieve just the data values 
um, as opposed to a get feature request that would return both the feature values and the geometry associated with a feature as well. So get property value allows you to uh, merely retrieve the attribute data without the associated uh, ge geographic feature. The get feature request and the associated get feature with lock request will both uh, return the actual features, the geometries associated with those features, and their associated attributes. As a part of the get feature request, you may also include um, query constraints that define the subset of features that you would like returned as a result of that get feature request. There is also a lock feature request that can be submitted to servers that implement this capability, which allows for the locking or protection of features that are likely being subjected to updates or changes so that multiple users cannot actually update or change a feature at the same time. When a feature is locked, it is prevented from modification by other users. Additional web feature service requests and operations include the uh, transaction request that um, essentially begins or ends a transaction that um, defines a block of feature creation, update, or deletion operations on a server. This is a way of essentially encapsulating a set of requests into a transaction so that um, those requests are defined as having uh, to be executed as a group. If they cannot be executed as a group, the server is supposed to be able to roll back to its previous state before the transaction started. The create stored query uh, request um, is, it allows a user to submit a defined query to the server that will be then stored on the server for f future reuse. This is, a way, this is the way that stored queries are added to a server. The corollary to the creation, create stored query request is the drop stored query request, which as you might guess, would drop a named uh, stored query on the server that has previously been, that has been saved on, that, on the server. The list stored queries request provides a list of the this, this queries that are stored on a server so that a client application can essentially understand what capabilities may be provided by stored queries on the server. And finally, the described stored queries request provides more detailed information about the, any of the queries that are stored on the server based on information that is provided when those queries are created. As we think about web feature services, there are differences between the various versions of the WFS standard, and there are also different, uh, essentially, web feature service compliance levels or implementation levels or tiers as we get to the version 2.0 uh, version of the WFS standard. This table provides a brief summary of the progressive implementation of uh, compliance levels from simple to locking. As you can see, the different operations or requests that are supported by the server. Um, as you move from the simple to locking types of compliance levels. So if you are interacting with a simple version 2.0 web feature service, it supports the core six requests, get capabilities, describe feature type, list stored queries, describe stored queries, get feature, and stored query. As you move to the right to the locking compliance level, you have those six plus get property value, transaction, get feature with lock, and lock feature as additional request types that can be submitted to the server. 
the basic and transactional compliance levels are in between those two extremes in terms of the implementation. You can also see in this table the difference between the earlier version 1.1.0 and version 2.0 requests that are supported. Where in version 1.1.0 you have um, support for the core get capabilities and describe feature type but you do not have any support for any of the stored query capabilities whether listing, describing, executing um, stored queries. You also do not have support for the get property value as that was only defined in version 2.0. Um, finally, in version 1.1.0, you had an additional request, the get GML object request, that was um, removed from version 2.0 forward as the get feature request um, can actually uh, serve the same purpose. And so the get GML object was removed from the standard as it was advanced to version 2.0. As you're uh, composing a request to be submitted to a web feature service, that request may be submitted using essentially three different methods. We have been focusing thus far and will continue to focus on the HTTP GET request, where essentially you are composing a URL that you could enter into and execute from the um, essentially the address bar of a web browser where the various parameters are pro provided as key value pairs or KVPs where each parameter name is is then matched up with a value using an equal sign. You can also uh, submit requests to WFS servers using the HTTP POST method um, where essentially the um, other the request parameters are included in the body of the request that is submitted to the remote server in a way analogous to many web form submissions um, the way many web form submissions are handled and supplied to the servers finally there's the simple object access protocol or SOAP method that is also an optional method for submitting requests to a WFS server a server uh, may implement any of these request types and is not re required to specifically support any given one of those, but they must support at least one of them. And conceptually, as we're talking about feature types in the terminology of web feature services, feature types are analogous to what we have historically th thought of as layers in GIS applications. As we look at the key value pairs for base web feature service requests, these are essentially the core components of a request of any type that is submitted to a web feature service. The one uh, key value pair that is required for all requests is the service parameter, which is required for all operations um, as, as a part of the key value pair collection that is submitted to the service. For all requests except for the gate capabilities request, a version parameter is also required. So you must have a service parameter for all requests and you must include a version parameter for all requests except for the gate capabilities request for which it is optional. Here we have some sample get capabilities requests to two web feature services. The first one to USGS's uh, framework web feature services, in this case their governmental units web feature service that is linked uh, from the slide and also from the associated lecture notes. And you can see in the example here um, the base URL, which is uh, in the displayed uh, link, the first line, um, and then two additional parameters. The request equals get capabilities 
followed by an ampersand, and then the service equals WFS. For a get capabilities request, those are the minimum two parameters that must be provided for a valid get capabilities request. Um, and despite the way I have displayed it here on the slide, all of those elements must be in a continuous text string on essentially a single line of text. So while I divided it up for display purposes here, that link should be one continuous text string with no spaces or line breaks. The second example points to the New Mexico Resource Geographic Information System and in particular the, the 2010 New Mexico Census Block Groups uh, web feature service that is hosted by NM Argus. This sample requests request includes the optional version parameter as well, as you can see on the fourth line of the sample request. As we look at the sam uh, sample request and the output provided by it, we can click on the link, say for this USGS framework layer, and look at the, uh, the XML document that is returned as a result of that request. Let me enlarge this a little bit so it's a little easier to read. And we can now look at the elements of this just as we previously were looking at the elements of the web map service capabilities request. Starting with the block of information about the service itself, this OWS service identification area, where we have the title of the service, in this case, there's an abstract element that contains no information, um, a keywords element that is blank, and then inf also information about the service type, that this is a web feature service. And the version of the web feature service standard that is implemented by this server. We can look now at the service provider information, which USGS has not provided uh, much detailed information, but this is where you would typically find the information about whom you should contact if you have any questions um, about how to access this service, whether it's the phone number, fax number, email address, mailing address, and other um, contact information for associated um, connections to the service. You also have, as with the web map services, this um, online resource element that provides the base URL that you would use in interacting with the service. We then get into the operations metadata section, which like the web map services met, uh, service metadata we were looking at previously, provides the information about the various requests that can be submitted and the, um, the various values that are supported by those requests. So in this case, we, we start with the get capabilities um, operation here as it's structured in this document. We see that um, it accepts, in this case, the HTTP get and post request types. So here's the information about how to submit both of those request types with, as we saw with WMS previously, the um, base URL associated with each of those request types. We see here information about what versions um, will be uh, accepted for requests submitted to this service. And then also the formats of the structured information that would be provided if an uh, uh, HTTP POST request is submitted. We can now look at this describe feature type request type and the information associated with it. Again, we can see that it supports both the GET and POST request methods. It provides information about the available output format or formats for this particular service. In this case, this is the block that is providing the information about the output format for the described feature type request. And you can see here, there is a single uh, output format that is supported, which is this text string right here. 
And we will see an example of this um, uh, a little bit later in the, in the lecture where you have to do uh, a little bit of additional work as you're compiling your, your, uh, your request URL to, to handle the space that is embedded in this particular format string that is provided by and supported by this service. We then move on to the get feature operation and the supported characteristics of that, including again, the get and post request methods. The uh, different types of uh, parameters that can, uh, that can be uh, requested in terms of a result type, where you can actually uh, uh, modify the request that is submitted to uh, limit it to the number of hits or, or particular results. Um, and you can then, of course, specify the output format, which again here is provided as a single format that is supported by this service for the results of a get feature request. This string here that describes essentially a GML representation of the query results. Um, there is also a uh, uh, information about the um, default number, maximum number of features that is supported by this service. That's an important thing to keep in mind as if you're interacting with a service that uh, may contain tens of thousands or millions of features, you will potentially want to um, define a maximum number of features that you would like to accept but there's also a maximum uh, number that is defined by default by the service, and that is this value right here. We can then go into some of the um, extended capabilities of the service that provide additional information about the service. And this is one of the areas where um, this is a, a there are periodically issues in terms of the latitude longitude or longitude latitude ordering of the uh, axis, essentially the ordering of the, um, the coordinates that are provided uh, depending upon the particular uh, spatial reference system that is used. Um, that is occasionally um, an issue with web feature services and we will see an example of that um, in a little bit. Here we have a listing of the different spatial reference systems that are supported by this service um, where uh, web feature services um, use um, a combination or can use a combination of this longer format of the definition of a particular um, uh, spatial reference system uh, reference term or this more compact EPSG form that we're already familiar with from the web map services request model. We then move down into the feature type listing. This is analogous to the listing of layers that you've already seen in a web map service where summary information about the available uh, feature types is provided as a part of the get capabilities response. Specifically, you have the name of the feature type that is provided here, where this is the name that you would use when actually requesting that as a part of a request to the server. It also uh, has a title, which may be a more human readable representation of the feature type that might be used in a map legend or other or other in other locations. Um, you have information here about the um, default spatial reference system. So if there is none provide uh, specified, this is the one that it will use. And then the output formats that are supported for the for this particular feature type. The bounding box in WGS84 latitude longitude for this particular feature type. All of this is the high level information um, about this given feature type. And depending on the service, you may have multiple feature types. So here we have this state or territory high resolution feature type. We also have 
an incorporated places feature type. Minor civil divisions. Reserves. Native American areas. County or equivalent areas. State or territory uh, boundaries in a low resolution format. So those will be simplified geometries in this case. Unincorporated places. Congressional districts. And so on and so forth. So this is a listing of all of the feature types that are available from this particular service. This service also is now telling us about the different types of operators that it can use for defining filters, for essentially defining subsets of features that should be returned as a result of a query against the system. So in this case, we start with the set of geometry operands, as they're called, um, for determining essentially uh, geometry types. In this case, four types are supported, an envelope, point, polygon, and line string, essentially as geometry types that can be used for um, executing then the set of spatial operators that are um, provided next, where you have these spatial operators including bounding box, equal, disjoint, intersects, crosses, touches, within, contains, or overlaps. So these are comparison operators that can be used in combination with those geometry operands to determine which features um, may be displayed or returned. Um, there are also a set of um, comparison operators that you can use as a part of those queries to determine equivalence, less than, greater than, like or similarity or whether or other criteria. So these are also operators that you would use when defining um, the various um, uh, features that would be returned as a part of a, uh, um, a query against a web feature service. And then finally, um, there is a, a, there's information provided here in terms of the different identifiers that are used um, within this data set to link to specific features within a given data set so that if necessary they may be referred to by their identifier. But this is the core get capabilities response that provides the high level information about this particular service. If I click on the capabilities request for um, the Argus service, you can see the similar um, structure and content for this service, which I will not go through in detail here, but I invite you to take a look uh, through this as another example of what that capabilities response looks like. So as you're composing, a, dis, a uh, request against the server, when you're ultimately trying to learn more information about a given feature type, you would actually then compose a describe feature type request. And these are the um, key uh, elements of that request that you uh, may either be required or optionally provide. Where essentially, for this request, the request parameter itself must be set to describe feature type, and you then may provide an optional list of type name, that is the list of the feature types that you would like more detailed information about. If you do not define this, you will then get essentially the more detailed um, information about the attributes for all of the feature types that are hosted by the particular service. And then you can also optionally provide an output format. Um, if you do not uh, submit this 
you will get the default uh, GML representation of the application, um, uh, essentially the application information. Um, in the case of the, uh, the WFS get capabilities request and the service that we were looking at earlier, there was actually only one output format supported. So by uh, the, this output format uh, request would be somewhat redundant as you're pretty much only able to get the default value anyway. Here are some sample describe feature type requests and I can click on the link here to uh, look at one in detail, but first you can see um, that I have uh, in the first example added the, um, the type name parameter to specify the specific um, feature type that I would like more detailed information about. Remember that type name parameter is an optional one and if I had not included it, I would receive the uh, information related to all of the feature types provided by that service. You'll also notice that the request equals describe feature type is set for this request as that is required as that is the type of request that we are submitting. So if I click on the link for this describe feature type request for the USGS framework layer, we can see here the output of that request that is essentially providing the geography markup language or GML um, version three definition of the attribute names and their data types as an XML schema. And so as you go through this, you can see that each one of these elements has a name. So here we have um, essentially this permanent identifier that is a simple type of type string with a length of 40 characters. We have then a source featured element that is also a 40 character string a source data set ID that is also a 40 character string, a source uh, data description that is a 100 character string, the source originator that is a 130 character string, um, a data security uh, uh, that, is, that is actually a different type of um, of uh, specification that's coming from an external uh, schema. We have a distribution policy here that is also from that external schema that has um, a, a length value of four. And all of these other attributes essentially. So these are all of the various um, per values that are available for the geometries for this particular um, uh, feature type. If we look at the describe feature type uh, request provided by the New Mexico Argus system, you actually have a slightly different representation where in this case, this is a GML 2.1.2 version as opposed to the GML 3.1 version that is supported by the USGS server. This highlights the differences you may see in the output from different requests depending on the uh, specific formats and versions of GML or the standard that are supported by different servers you're interacting with. In this case, you can see we have uh, supported by this Argus uh, service, this set of attributes that are in this case, um, essentially, except for the geometry in the first line, all of type string. But this is the information you would uh, be able to look at to figure out exactly what the attributes are and what data types they are that you can expect to get from the server if you request features from the server. The get feature request is the request that you submit to the server when you actually want to retrieve the features themselves the geometries representing those features and their associated um, attributes. Where in this case, 
The request must be equal to get feature as that is the type of request that you are submitting. And then you have these other um, elements that are also um, uh, optional or required as a part of the request. And we will briefly go through those right now. So as we're thinking about the presentation parameters, this is basically defining um, potentially a subset of the features that we would like returned as a result of our query. You'll notice that all of these requests, uh, request parameters are optional, as indicated by the third column in this table. Um, and then you can look at the values in terms of the start index defines um, where in essentially the sequence of features you would like to start retrieving features that are delivered as a part of the package that, are, that is returned. So you could almost think of this as a way to page through a large collection of features where your first request might be for the first 10 features. So your start index might be one. Your next request might be for the next 10 features. So your start index might be 11, so on and so forth. Similarly, the count is um, basically the number of um, features that you would like uh, delivered to you. So in that paging scenario, the count in this case could potentially be 10. Um, the output format defines the format that you would like the features delivered in, where the um, in this case the default is going to be um, GML, a version of GML. Um, and then the result type is essentially one of those two options of either the results themselves, the features and their attributes, or the number of features, an indicator as to how many features would be returned if you were to submit a request um, that, that uh, basically includes all the parameters you've defined uh, with the exception of this result type that you have set to um, something other than results. So when we're talking about um, resolve parameters, these are um, basically related to the um, resolution of the, um, the uh, values that are going to be uh, returned and, and defining, again, the set of features that are going to be returned and, and the, um, the, uh, essentially the depth and the amount of time that you um, want the server to spend uh, drilling down through a potentially multi-layered um, or multi-depth uh, sort of data set. Finally, um, you have um, support for ad hoc queries where you can actually then provide some additional information about how uh, the features should be sorted or how they should be filtered based on a geographic bounding box or other query uh, conditions. Um, essentially, uh, this is where you can um, also define the subset of um, of feature types that are going to be re returned. In this case, the type names request is required where all of the other options are optional or requests are optional. Stored query parameters allow you to um, essentially define uh, or, or provide the identifier for a stored query that would be run on the server. Um, and if that query requires additional uh, parameters, you are, um, you are also needing to provide those as optional parameters so that that stored query can execute properly. But this relates to that stored query support by um, any of those version 2.0 implementations of the web feature service standard. Here we have um, two examples for a get feature request submitted again to either the USGS uh, governmental units web feature service um, or an alternative uh, request to that same service that also specifies an output format. Um, let's first look at the, uh, the, the request here 
where we basically have the base URL and four parameters that are provided. The version, in this case version 1.1.0, the request, where the, in this case, since we're doing a get feature request, the request must equal get feature. The service specification, which in our web feature services will always be equal to WFS. And in this case, we're also specifying a type name where um, we are defining, in this case, only one uh, feature type that we would like to have features returned for. Um, in this case, it's that WFS, gov units, colon, state, or territory, high res um, uh, feature type. One thing to keep in mind, as is noted here, is that there was a slight change in the type name, per, uh, parameter name, between version 1.1.0 and 2.0.0 where it changed from type name in the earlier version to type names, plural, for version 2.0.0. Um, that is something to keep in mind depending on the version of web feature service that you're interacting with. Since in both of these examples we're working with version 1.1.0, we are using the type name parameter name. The second, second example is the same as the first, except we are also specifying an output format using the text string um, that is provided as a part of the gate capabilities response. You might remember that as we looked at that response, we had um, this long text string that was provided as um, basically the single supported output format by this service. And the text string that is provided in the get capabilities request had a space following the semicolon in the middle of that text string. When you are composing a URL, essentially a web address that you would submit to a server, a space in that URL is not valid. And you must instead put a placeholder for that space into the URL that you're composing which in this case is a percent sign followed by the number two zero. So percent two zero as the placeholder for the space that was in the string that defined the output format. If you were to just copy and paste the text string for the format into your URL, you would get an error from the server. So remember to keep an eye out for any errant spaces in those output formats or any other elements for that matter, and make sure to replace them with this percent to zero character um, so that there are no uh, spaces in the URLs that are submitted to the server. If we click on the live link for this particular server, We're now submitting that get feature request to the server. And in this case, we're going to get both the features and their associated attributes as a GML file. Um, it is still retrieving the information and until it receives the entire formatted document, it, is, uh, it was displaying that text. And now you can see the actual GML, which as we discussed previously is just another dialect of XML where there is a specific structure defining how to uh, define the uh, essentially the coordinates associated with a given feature and the attributes associated with that feature. So here we have this nested structure for each of our features where we have a set of coordinates, another set of coordinates, another set of coordinates, so on and so forth. And we eventually get to the point where we get to the attributes associated with this particular feature. So if we keep going, we now uh, eventually get to the set of attributes that are also associated with that particular feature. We then would we then go to our next feature, 
and the set of geometries associated with that feature and attributes then as well that are linked to that set of geometries, so on and so forth. This is the GML representation that your geographic information system or other application would be able to use to both display the geometries and their associated attributes. Now let's move on to the Open Geospatial Consortium Web Coverage Services Standard. As background to the OGCWCS standard, you can follow the link here to the, uh, the actual um, document that defines the standard. Um, but the key characteristics that you need to keep in mind about the OGC Web Coverage Services Standard is that it is focused, as the Web Feature Services Standard is, on the retrieval of geospatial data with the difference being that the Web Coverage Service Standard focuses on data in the form of what are called coverages, where uh, the primary focus is often on gridded or raster data, um, where those data essentially uh, represent values that are varying in time and, and or space. So while um, the vector data commonly represented by web feature services are uh, typically defined by specific geometries, points, lines, or polygons and their associated attributes, coverages are typically um, more continuously varying phenomena that may also have a temporal component. The standard that is referenced here is only the core of the WCS standard and there are required extensions that define the different methods for interacting with a given WCS server. Um, so this is the core for essentially the key value uh, pair protocol for uh, interacting with the server but the extensions define the additional information that an implementation of the web coverage service would also need to provide to uh, essentially complete an implementation. So the key for WCS is that they also return data that are really designed for use in any variety of client applications, whether it's models or desktop geographic information systems or web applications, um, where again, the WCS standard um, allows the client to specify uh, spatial and temporal subsets from the source data that may be used to generate the data products that are returned. Um, this is another area where WCS differs from WFS in that WFS uses its query model where essentially if you have a say a timestamp or a date attribute associated with given geometries, you can use the WFS query methods to do a, a temporal search for um, features that meet some sort of filter condition. In WCS, the temporal support is built into the protocol itself, the standard for defining times of interest for data that should be returned by a web coverage service if it implements support for time. WCS supports three core requests. The get capabilities request that we've seen previously for web map and web feature services that also provides the core documentation about the service as a whole and the initial listing of the available coverages provided by the service. There's a describe coverage request that, provide, that will return more detailed information about specific coverages that um, is uh, more detailed than the high level information that is included in the get capabilities request. And then finally, there's the get coverage request, which um, is the request that you submit to a WCS server to actually retrieve the data sets themselves. Um, and as a part of that request, you can specify the, the desired data formats, um, time, 
whether or not uh, any appropriate interpolation method would should be used, the dimensions and other characteristics of the image or the, or the data set that should be returned. As requests to a web covered service are developed, like WFS, one of three methods can be used to submit a request to a web covered service. The first is the HTTP GET request that we are continuing to use here in our examples where we have essentially the base URL plus a set of name value pairs that are included as parameters that you could type into the address bar of a web browser. There's the HTTP POST method that we've previously discussed as a method for essentially the um, request being submitted to the host, but all of the key value pairs being submitted essentially as an XML document that is embedded in the, the request that is sent to the server. And then finally, again, the simple object access protocol or SOAP method for um, interacting with the server. In our case, we are going to continue working with the HTTP GET method. As with uh, our previous uh, OGC examples, there are two mandatory uh, re request parameters that must be provided for as a part of all requests and those are the service. In this case, service will always be set to WCS for the web coverage service that you're wanting to use. And then the request is must be the type of request that you are submitting. Either get capabilities, describe coverage, or get coverage. For all requests except for the get capabilities request, you must also define the version of the protocol that you're that you're submitting. As we've seen with our other OGC standards, the version parameter is optional for the get capabilities request. Here are two sample get capabilities requests, one to uh, the uh, one to NOAA's global forecast system uh, threads catalog. This is a server that they maintain that provides uh, access using a wide variety of access protocols, including the OGC web coverage services. And you can see that this get capabilities request um, includes both the required service parameter, where service equals WCS, and the required request parameter, where request equals get capabilities. And it also includes the optional version parameter, where version is set to 1.0.0. Remember that for the get capabilities request, that version parameter is optional. The second, second example is to the New Mexico Resource Geographic Information Systems PRISM Precipitation Normals WCS service, where again, it has that base URL as the first line, but then you have those core OGC WCS uh, request parameters of the service equals WCS, request equals get capabilities, and the optional version equals 1.1.2 in this case. If we click on the link for the NOAA GFS service, we can see the returned XML capabilities request and in this case, the service metadata that NOAA is providing is very scant. You can see it's basically that there are no fees associated with this and that there are no access constraints. Um, additional information will be provided by other services. We can then look at the capabilities section where again we have the, get, the various request types that could be submitted, including then the um, request methods that are supported by those types. In this case, for the get capabilities request, we can see that um, basically the thread service supports only the get method. And this, of course, now is the base URL for submitting that get request. Here's the described coverage. Um, again, highlighting that it supports only the get request. 
And this is the base URL for that GET request. And then the GET coverage request, which supports only the GET method using this base URL highlighted here. So this is the same pattern we've seen for our other GET capabilities um, responses, and this should be fairly familiar to you now. There's also information provided here in terms of the exception format uh, supported by this uh, service for any of the requests where in this case there's a single format that you can expect um, an exception or error message to be delivered in. In this case, it's an OGC specified XML format. And with that, those, that's the metadata about the various capabilities of the, of the service as a whole. And then we get to the listing of the uh, various coverages that are available through this service as a brief listing of information about those, um, where, again, the described coverage request can be used to obtain more detailed information. So in this case, we have for each available coverage a coverage offering brief element that includes a description that human readable description of what, what that uh, coverage is, and then a name that would be used to request more detailed information about the coverage as a, as a part of a described coverage request, or that would be used in a get coverage request to actually retrieve data from that particular coverage. Um, you can see also here that there's a label provided that some clients might use to display um, the uh, essentially the, the the name of the coverage in a more user-friendly format you can see here that we have a latitude and longitude um, uh, envelope that is defined that in this case is defining the um, the bounding box in um, geographic WGS 84 coordinates and you can also see that this um, particular service also supports um, time elements where this is essentially the time, these are the time positions that are supported by this particular service for um, delivering this particular coverage. And you can see that we have a number of coverage offerings briefs, each one of them corresponding to a different coverage just as in the web map service, we have layers, and in the web feature service, we have feature types. In this case, each one of these coverage offering briefs corresponds to a particular set of data that you can either request more information about or that you can request the data for. And you can see in this case that this service provides uh, quite a few different coverages as a part of the available data from this from this service. In contrast, if we click on the link for the Argus Prism data set, we will see actually a, a, a more brief uh, capabilities uh, response as this service um, basically supports um, and provides uh, a single coverage as a part of the, um, the uh, as the available data set from this particular service. As we move forward and consider the described coverage request, there are um, additional parameters that um, may be included, and in this case must be included, in that request including, as we've seen with other, other um, requests, the required service and um, request parameters. And since this is not the get capabilities request, the, uh, there's the version parameter is also required, as is the coverage ID, the name that is associated with a particular coverage that is, that is uh, enumerated in the XML document provided as a, uh, in response to the, get, the uh, GET capabilities request. With these parameters, you can then compose a described coverage request, like those that are displayed here. In this case, we have 
Again, a sample request against both the NOAA Global Forecast System and the New Mexico Resource Geographic Information System, where in the case of the, the NOAA request, we again have the required service version and request parameters, where in this case the request equals described coverage. And we now have also included the required coverage parameter, which in this case for the NOAA system, we have set to categorical underbar rain, which is the name of one of the coverages that is available through the service. If we click on the link here to look at that described coverage information, we can see the more detailed metadata associated with that particular coverage. Where in this case, in the coverage offering section here, we start with a description of the data set and the name of the data set or coverage. This is similar to the information that is provided as a part of the Get Capabilities request. Um, we have the label that is also provided as a part of the Get Capabilities request. We have the lat long envelope also provided as a part of the Get Capabilities request. But then we start getting into um, some more detailed information in some cases about the coverage and some of the capabilities related to this coverage. In this case, there is the definition of this envelope with time period that represents actually the same information that we saw earlier in terms of the lat long envelope. But if there are other spatial reference systems that are supported, you might actually have different values provided as a part of these coordinates that define the um, essentially the envelope, the spatial envelope or the temporal envelope that are supported by this particular coverage. You may also, as we do in this case, have a rectified grid element that um, is defining essentially a second spatial reference system and a set of coordinates, in this case in, in pixel coordinates, the, um, the size of an envelope for the grid that you can um, uh, submit uh, requests within. Um, and then also names for the two axes that are represented by that envelope. You have here a definition of what the geographic origin of that grid is, and then um, a definition of what the offset, essentially in this case, what the uh, spatial resolution of that particular um, grid is. And in this case, this particular data set is on a half degree um, grid. And so you see here the um, offset for um, the definition of essentially the interval of the grid elements. You then have um, another representation of the temporal domain where you might see additional elements if the data set supports multiple points in time. And bottom line is that this domain set element uh, defines the particular set of ranges for both space and time that, that are supported by this particular data set. We then get into the range set area where you can actually um, define additional ranges or values, essentially the range of values that are supported by this particular data set, where in this case the description of those values are again this categorical rain um, uh, classification um, and then a label and then a definition here of what null values represent. So if there are NAN values that are, that are uh, in the data set, those represent null values in the data set. Important as you're trying to actually interpret what the values are. Information about the su supported coordinate reference systems where each coverage may actually have its own set of coordinate reference systems that it supports. In this case, um, it supports the, um, the requests that are submitted using the OGC coordinate reference system 84. Um, that is a uh, coordinate reference system that actually provides uh, the requests or the bounding boxes in longitude latitude order. That's something that um, causes some amount of confusion 
uh, when submitting requests to more recent uh, versions of the web coverage services. Um, and then also there's information about the coordinate reference system that responses will be provided in. And then information about the formats that are supported by this service for the delivery of data that are requested from this particular coverage. So in this case, we see that there are three supported formats for this coverage. Uh, standard GeoTIFF, a GeoTIFF using floating point numeric values, and NetCDF version 3. So you could conceivably compose a valid get coverage request where you specified one of those three supported formats. Finally, as you are often requesting gridded information that may require some form of interpolation to generate the product that you're going to receive, um, different services may implement or make available different methods of interpolation between the values that are in the source data and the values that are written into and provided in the generated product. This supported interpolation section here provides information about the various interpolation methods that are available associated with that particular coverage. So you can choose an appropriate interpolation method of, based on the nature of the data. So this is all of the more detailed information that you might need to know as you're wanting to ultimately then compose your get coverage request to that uh, remote web coverage service. Finally, we can look at the key value pairs for a get coverage request, which again has the same set of core required elements in terms of the service, the version, the request, where in this case the request must equal get coverage, um, and then the coverage ID, the name of the coverage that you would like the, uh, the data returned for. And then you may also uh, provide some subset information if you would like only, only a particular geographic region or temporal subset of the available data. So when we think about specifying subsets, um, the, you can see in the example down below here an example of um, three additional subset, you could think of them as filters, where we are defining uh, three ways that we want to limit the um, data that are returned as a part of this request. The first subset um, specification is saying I want to limit the range of longitude values based on the um, coordinate reference system of, of basically 4326 from minus 71 to positive 47. So that's the range of longitude values that define part of my spatial uh, area of interest. Similarly, the next subset element is for the latitude. Again, defining the spatial reference system or the coordinate reference system that, I, that I'm providing those coordinates in. Again, in this case, EPSG 4326, where I'm specifying a latitude range from minus 66 degrees to positive 51 degrees. Finally, I'm specifying a temporal subset that is here referred to by the T term, and we're specifying what the definition of that sub subset is using that link to, in this case, the Gregorian plus UTC um, representation of time. Uh, from the International Standards Organization, um, and, and then providing the string that defines the specific time that I would like to limit this request to. So in this case, in this example, we have the required service, version, request, and coverage ID elements, but then we have these three optional subset elements that are going to limit, in this case, both the spatial extent of the data that are returned and the temporal extent of the data that are returned. 
Here is an example of a complete web coverage service request that would be submitted to the New Mexico uh, Resource Geographic Information System PRISM uh, service, um, where essentially you can see all of these pieces coming together, um, where in this particular um, version of web coverage service, I can also specify a bounding box in a slightly more um, straightforward method than using that subset um, syntax described previously. Where here, again, we're specifying those required service, request, version, and coverage elements. We're defining the coordinate reference system for the bounding box that we're specifying. If you're going to define a bounding box, you must also specify a coordinate reference system. Where you can see here, the, um, the ordering of the coordinates is the reverse of what we have been using previously. This is, again, a change in the more recent versions of the web coverage service standard where we are providing our coordinates in essentially um, the uh, uh, order of latitude and longitude as opposed to um, longitude and latitude. So you need to uh, keep an eye out for that as you're composing any requests. We're requesting an image in the TIFF format and then we're also specifying the dimensions of the data set that will be returned. Now, the one thing that you need to keep in mind is that this standard, this get coverage response, is really designed as a response that would be used by an application to receive the data. So if I click on this link, I'm actually going to get something that looks a little bit like gibberish that is downloaded to my computer. And that gibberish includes essentially a two-part file. The first part is uh, essentially some text information that describes the results of the response. But then there is um, a second part to the file that includes essentially the binary data as it has been encoded to transmit over the web. So this is not something that, unlike looking at even at the GML we were working with previously, you could look at in your browser. This is something that you really have to um, execute from within, say, a geographic information system or other system that implements the WCS standard as a, as a client, which is exactly what we will be doing in the coming weeks as we start working with desktop GIS applications as clients to these various services.